Hello guys, now this is a bit of a treat because I've probably got the three biggest brains, the three creationist brains in all of the UK right here next to me and these guys believe in a young earth creationist, they don't believe in evolution and I've got them to ask them one question. Now, on the streets as a street preacher, I meet lots of people who say, I don't believe in God, I don't think there's any such thing as a God, and evolution's the answer. And then when I start asking them some questions and say, so do you understand evolution? They don't. So what would be a sort of simple rebuttal to evolution which you could give to these young people or someone who doesn't really understand science? Let's start with uh, Andy first, Andy McIntosh. Well, I'd, say, I'd say to someone who was saying that, where does a feather come from? I've got a feather here, right? Now, a feather is made of things like your fingernail and the hair that I used to have on my head, but I won't pull it off. But, you know, feathers have a remarkable structure which is only seen at the microscopic level. Ask, ask this gentleman or the lady who is asking this question, how come that when you put feathers back together again with a brush over the fingers over the barbs, they come back together again? There is an amazing mechanism of hooks going one side from the, each barb and barbules, they're called, these are mini barbs, on the other side they've got ridges on, so the hooks are sliding over the ridges, but at a microscopic level. So, yes, it's true that scales are also made of another type of keratin, and so the evolutionist says that keratin from a scale has changed into a keratin of a feather. But where did the structure come from? Tell me, how did it happen? Everything is telling you that there is a mechanism here where you've got to have barbules on that side different to the barbules going on the other side and that's the clever little mechanism in every feather and did you know that every feather is controlled by a muscle on a bird and that for some birds there are literally tens of thousands of different types of feathers thank you professor andy mcintosh let's come next to professor stuart burgess you need to google this man's name he's an interesting man uh, I think one of the things I would tell people is the human body is full of amazing design and irreducible design. This is a kind of design where you need lots of components simultaneously for that system to have a useful function. So for example in the, in the knee joint we have a mechanism. Uh, this is a parallelogram four bar mechanism. But if I invert that, I get an inverted four bar parallelogram mechanism. And if you have a healthy knee, you have one of these in each of your knees. These red bars are the cruciate ligaments and they guide the knee. You also have a cam mechanism, the way the bones roll over each other. Uh, but th this is an amazing design and all engineers know that this four bar mechanism cannot evolve step by step. You need all four bars, all four pins simultaneously. It cannot evolve step by step. And lots of other parts of the body, we have this irreducible design. We have an arched foot, which is a little bit like an arched engineered bridge. It cannot evolve step by step. All of the parts need to be there together. Just another thing I want to mention about the human body, uh, the human body is full of over design. Our hands are not designed to throw a punch, as evolutionists say, or to throw a spear. They're designed to play the piano. When you think of the amazing skill that humans have to play musical instruments, that makes sense if God has created us, but it doesn't make sense if we were evolved to be hunter gatherers. Just one last thing I want to say uh, a lot of people think all academics in universities confident in evolution, they don't believe in intelligent design, but having spent 25 years in academia, I'm amazed how many academics are very sympathetic to intelligent design. That doesn't come across in the media, but that's what I found from first-hand experience. Thank you. And Professor Stephen Taylor now, your evidence. Well, um, my, uh, when I teach at university, I teach uh, electromagnetics and also this year I teach uh, electrical drives. And we try and study electrical machines, that's the things that we find in anything from a, a hoover or a car or a, an electrical uh, uh, motor in an engine. But the smallest 
electrical drive on the planet is called ATP synthase. Let me say that again. ATP synthase. It's the motor in your cells. It does trillions of them in your body and in fact throughout uh, uh, life on, on, on Earth from simple cells, uh, simple creatures like a, right up to, to us. But also these motors are far more efficient than anything we can design, humanly speaking. They're more than 99% efficient. They rotate at speeds between six to 9,000 uh, RPM and that they produce the energy that we need to keep going. If these stop, you and I die. That's how important they are. Now the problem for evolution is this, not only are they irreducibly complex, as Andy and Stuart have just mentioned, but also that you need to be alive for the evolutionary process to work, and without one of these things there, you would be dead. So it's a real chicken and egg at the nanoscale, and it's got all the hallmarks of intelligent design. The last piece of design I would, uh, oh, sorry, ar argument if you like, or evidence for creation is this. No one has ever seen a computer program that's been produced by a random process. Because random processes cannot produce sophisticated levels of in information. You look at the genome with its billions of base pairs, and you find marvelous coding, coding levels that we cannot understand. How is it possible that an unguided process such as evolution could produce something like the genomic code? It just doesn't stack up. Bring God into the picture. You have the designer who designed us. You have the designer who became human to become like us, to die for our sins upon the cross, to rise again the third day, showing us who he is. Uh, the evidence is overwhelming, friends. You need to look at it for yourself. So guys, you've heard it here. Three professors have challenged evolution. What are your thoughts? Leave it in the comment box below. God bless you all.